This is question 21 from the 2016 TSA, and we're asked which of the following identifies a flaw in the argument. So first let's look at the argument. So in the first sentence, it starts with it's all very well. So the writer is sort of adopting a sceptical skeptical attitude to what they're about to say. They say it's all very well for Europeans to expect African farmers and villagers to show the same enthusiasm for lion protection schemes as tourists and conservationists. So what the writer is doubting is that African farmers and villagers should care for lions the same as tourists and conservationists do. So that's, it looks like that's part of the writer's opinion. Let's see what happens. So now they mention that the average Tanzanian farm loses £600 a year of livestock to lions. So that's just a factual statement. And they say that lions can't tell valuable domestic beasts from wild beasts. That's another factual statement. Then they start to talk about European countries. They say most European countries wouldn't accept the threat of big cats to, um, to profits and to their children. And they, to support that, they give another factual statement that in Europe, the large dangerous animals have mostly been eliminated. And lastly, they say, why should Africa be different? So what they're saying is, it's okay for Africans to do the same as Europe, so to also eliminate dangerous animals, which in this case means lions. And you can see that's just expanding on their initial statement. First, they were doubtful that African farms and villages should care about lions as much as Europeans do. And then they expand on that at the end to say, actually, it's okay for Africans not to. So we've gone from being doubtful to making this claim. So that means this is the conclusion, and we have these factual statements in the middle to back it up. So let's quickly present the argument like that. Okay, so the reasons that are given basically amount to saying that lions are dangerous animals. For instance, they eat livestock. And that in Europe, the dangerous animals have been eliminated. And the conclusion is that it's okay for Africans to eliminate lions or not protect lions, um, because Europeans did. And now, bear in mind, we're looking for a flaw in this argument. So... What is necessary for this reasoning to happen? Well, something to look for is that these are all factual statements, but it's a kind of moral conclusion about what's morally okay or morally right that's been made. So that means we've gone from factual claims to a moral claim, and whenever that happens, um, this isn't like a straightforward logical deduction, there has to be some sort of moral principle being used. So basically there's some kind of moral assumption being made. And if that assumption were wrong, then the argument would fail. So this is a good place to look for a flaw. And what exactly is that principle? Well, the principle is basically what Europeans did, it's okay for Africans to do. So the principle is basically if one group does something, it's okay for another group to do the same thing. So seeing as this is the principle underlying the argument, let's have a look at the options and see if any of them is a flaw that would undermine this. OK, so I've copied in my brief argument structure and the principle that underlies it, and here are my options A to E. And we're looking for something that sort of undermines the argument, which seems to rest on this principle that what one group does is OK for another group to do. And if we look at option A, it says other countries not protecting wildlife doesn't make it right. But that does undermine the principle. It's saying just because other countries do something, it's not OK for further countries to do the same thing. It's not right for Africans also to allow lions to be eliminated. And so, actually, it looks like this is going to be the right answer because it undermines the principle. Let's just quickly look at the others. B says, in the UK, farmers want to cull badgers to protect their cattle. And C says, um, that in African communities, often they're poor, so lions threaten them. And both of those things would actually strengthen the argument because they give, this supports this reason and this supports this reason that lions are dangerous to Africans. Um, so both of those would actually strengthen the argument, so they're not going to be a flaw. And then D and E both point out problems with eliminating lions. So D says the lions would become endangered if they weren't protected, and E says that tourism would suffer. So both of those might be reasons not to um, eliminate lions or to stop them being protected. But they don't undermine this principle, and they don't undermine the idea that it would be okay to allow them to be eliminated. Um, so they might give you a particular reason not to, 
but they don't undermine the principle that it would be okay. So those aren't going to be the flaw either. Something it's useful to point out here is that B to E are all factual statements, but usually a, a statement of what's true about the world, like what's happening in the UK or what happens in African tourism, isn't going to express a flaw in an argument. Normally the flaw is going to be some kind of more general principle, like A is. Um, so again, we conclude that A is going to be our final answer.